everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my May wrap-up. I was about to say June wrap-up. We, I'm not in the future. Um, but I will also be talking about a tentative June TBR near the end of this video, so stick around for that. I am here to go over all the books that I read in May. So, May was also the medieval -athon, and I usually in my wrap-ups I go in the order of the books that I read in the order that I read them as I go through them for you guys but this go round I'm just going to talk about the Medievalathon books first the ones that I actually read for prompts for the Medievalathon and then I will go into the other ones in order that I read them. The very first book I read for the Medievalathon I read for the prompt of orange on the cover which is to get you a little fox companion friend and that was The Lost Queen by Signe Pike. Now, uh, this is a new favorite of mine, like of all time. This book wrecked me. It was fantastic, and I cannot wait until September for the next one to come out. So this is about Langareth, who is a queen from Scotland, from 6th century Scotland, and her twin brother, Lilikin, was the origin of the myth of Merlin so so-called origin of the myth of Merlin. Uh, there is factual evidence that he is. This is incredible. This is a book that follows uh, Langreth's life from a child, from when she loses her mother up until when she is married to a man and has many children herself. You deal with her love story and it's pitched as Outlander meets Camelot and I just couldn't get enough of this. It is so, so, so beautiful. And it's just, like, there's just the barest touch of magic. It is more historical than anything, but I absolutely adored this. And I gave this five stars. The next book I read for the Medievalathon was to, for the prompt, uh, something pointy on the cover to get myself a sword. And I ended up reading The Assassin's Apprentice. And if you couldn't tell, because it was a very tiny book, he has a sword on his belt, which I counted as the pointy thing. There's also a stag in the back, and his antlers could count as pointy as well, but like, I went with the sword instead on his actual belt. Uh, this is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is about Fitz and his, basically his growing up and training to become an assassin. It's a little bit of a softer, slower fantasy, but it, I know is just building for the second one and the third one when he's an adult. Fitz also has a really interesting power in here that isn't really discussed a lot. It's just kind of like not allowed, which is really interesting. And I'm really intrigued to keep going with this. I gave this one four stars because I enjoyed it and I listened to the audiobook, which helped me get through it a lot faster. But I think without that audiobook, I probably wouldn't have gotten through it very fast at all because it is a fantasy, but really quite not slow, but that's the only word I can think of. It's just medieval and you're going through life with Fitz and then near the end of it he actually, like that's where the action picks up and the end is in incredible. But yes, four stars. And so finally I um, needed to read a book for prompt that actually got my character for the medieval font some clothes. So this one I read for the prompt of green on the cover to get myself this outfit and uh, it's The Grand Sophie by Georgette Heyer. This book was just so fun and so funny. It was like I had a smirk on my face the entire time. I laughed out loud in spots and I just absolutely adored our heroine Sophie. She is so whip smart and reminds me of Miss Fisher from Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, the show, so much of like a younger version of Miss Fisher. She just has spunk and she doesn't really care about what people think of her, even though she's grown up in this society that is super intense on rules. This is set, I believe, sort of like in the Victorian era, it's not really specified, but it deals with all those constraints on society and women and men and stuff. So um, Sophie basically comes to live with her aunt when her dad goes overseas and she completely uproots this family and it's so good, it's so funny. And the like counterpart to her is her cousin and he is like, a, 
he's really unlikable in the beginning, but he does have a good character arc in this. But yeah, it it's such a good, good read with great character dynamics, and Sophie is just so funny. So yes, loved this, and I gave this 4.5 stars. All right, for the prompt to get a horse companion, you have to read a really tall hardback. And I had originally put Child of a Mad God by R.A. Salvatore on my TBR for this specific prompt. I got about a hundred pages in, I do believe, and I DNF'd it. It was my first official DNF of 2020, but I still wanted to get this prompt. I still wanted to get a horse companion for the Medievalathon, so I went back into my shelves and picked up Ninth House by Lee Bardugo instead because it is also a tall hardback and I really really liked this. I also, one of my holds on Libby came in and it was the audiobook for this and so I was like why not? I will take that and I will read it that weekend that I got it and I ended up finishing it in less than 24 hours in one sitting. I really enjoyed this dark academia fantasy book. It is about Alex Stern who gets recruited by a dean at Yale to become a part of a of Lethe, which is a society that overlooks all the secret societies of Yale and keeps them in order. This society also deals with magic and demons and ghosts and Alex herself can see these ghosts everywhere she goes and um, it's, it's very dark and it, it in times can get a little bit much so if you want to read this definitely look up trigger warnings if you need them but this book was really 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 great and I ended up giving this one four stars and then the last book that I read specifically for a prompt for the medieval athon was for the prompt for a shield it was to basically read a book that you have high expectations for Four. And so I ended up reading The Night Circus by Aaron Morgan Stern because one of my favorite books of all time, if not my favorite book of all time, is her book The Starless Sea. And I have only heard good things about this really. My best friend across the street from me basically, she gave this to me and said it was one of her favorite books and she's it's one of the only books that she's ever reread, which is huge. She's not a huge reader, but like she loved this. And I read this and I loved it. I wasn't as blown away as this by as I was by The Starless Sea. The Starless Sea is just next level for me. This book is basically a love story between Marco and Celia as they are pitched together in a very dangerous game that also involves a circus that appears only at night and all of that magic and whimsy and enchantment comes with it and it is so beautifully written and it is such a lovely, lovely rich story. And I ended up giving this one 4.5 stars. Alright, so besides all of those for the Medievalathon, I also read a few other books and I first and foremost read Guer the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mer Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This is a whole mouthful, this one. Um, I read this for a book club with my friends and I absolutely adored this. This is a new favorite of mine. It just felt so comforting and so sad and I just loved it so much. It is a novel that is set right after World War II. It concerns Juliet who gets a letter one day from a Dawsey on Guernsey saying that her, one of her old books somehow had made it to Guernsey and saved his life during the war. And this is a book comprised com completely of, of letters, so it is an epistolary novel, and it shows how Juliet is affected by learning about this bookish society on Guernsey, and how she goes out there and meets the people and just falls in love with all the people there. And it is beautiful and heartbreaking and filled with so much sorrow, but so much hope at the same time, and it's just beautiful. And I gave this one five stars. Loved it. So then I ended up reading this book, um, which is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. And I read this for a video that's on my channel uh, where I ask, answer the question, does it still stand up? Later in the month, I also read the other two. So I'm just gonna talk about all three of them anyways, even though it's not in like the narrative, not the narrative, the um, timely order. <laughs> uh, but yes, so I ended up rereading the entire Hunger Games trilogy this month and really loved my time doing it. I also read Mockingjay for the first time because as a child, I DNF'd it halfway through, so I finally actually got to the end of it 
and liked it more than I thought I was going to, but like it the least out of the trilogy. Uh, so I gave The Hunger Games 4 stars, Catching Fire 5 stars, and Mockingjay 3.5 stars. You know, this trilogy really is just so good, and it needs to be on every everyone's radar, every young person's radar, um, because it's just, there's something about it. There's just something about this trilogy that is so, so good and so compulsively readable and just fabulous. Yes, it's not without flaws, um, but it's just, maybe it's because I'm really nostalgic, but it just holds a special place in my heart, and even more so now that I've reread it and re-fallen back in love with it, but yes read this entire trilogy this month. After that, I ended up reading To Have and To Hoax by Martha Waters. This is our lovely ladies book club pick for this month. The live stream is on my channel tomorrow for you guys, because uh, it's Friday when you're watching this, or Friday when this is uploaded. So Saturday, June 6th, this is, we are going to be talking about this on my channel, and the live stream will stay up on my channel, so you can watch it whenever. This is a historical romance novel about two people who two people, James and Violet, who fell in love, had a whirlwind first year of marriage, and then had a massive falling out and have barely spoken to each other for four years. And this is their coming back together. And it's quite funny because they get into this game with each other to basically try and punish the other whilst st not realizing that they're still really in love with each other. So it was great. I enjoyed this, but I also was quite... I got irritated at times about how childish these characters were, but uh, in, in a lot of circumstances. <laughs> but I it was great because it paired like a twist on my favorite trope, which is hate to love with um, one of my least favorite tropes, which is lack of communication. So it was an interesting combination, and uh, yeah, it was good. I ended up, I said in my vlog I gave this four stars, but I ended up changing my rating to 3.5, because it just isn't a four star for me after like contemplation, so 3.5 stars. After that, I ended up reading a book for my personal book club with my friends. Uh, it's called Curiosity by John Thomas. I ended up giving it one star because I did not like it at all. It was confusing, the writing was muddy and cloudy, not in a good way, and it was just boring and at times kind of racist and a little bit problematic. So we're just gonna leave it there. One star. Not good. And then the last book I read of May was The Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. This is the second book of his second series, The Heroes of Olympus, and it follows Percy, who is from the first series, on a new kind of quest after he loses his memories. Um, that's all I'm gonna say because if you haven't read the first one and this one or any of the canonical stuff beforehand, you're gonna get spoiled. So I enjoyed this. I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. Not my favorite Riordan, but it allowed me to escape and there's just something about Riordan's writing that just swallows you in the story, wraps you up in it, and you read it so fast, and you get through it, and then you're like, ah, oh, that was so nice. I had like three hours where I didn't think of anything but this book, and I really miss reading books like that, so loved this. But yes, okay, so that those are all the books that I read in May, which is incredible. I am very happy with that giant list of things. And now I'm gonna talk about the books that I want to read in June, uh, so give me one second, I have- they're currently underneath my camera. <laughs> Don't really know if that is the same angle, but we're just gonna have to work with it. So, in June, I don't have any, um, readathons going on, I don't have any strict plans going on, really, and I'm leaving my TBR a little bit more open. There are a few books that I do want to read, uh, because I'm either into them now, or they've been sitting on my TBR for a while, and I plan on reading them anyways. Uh, the first one is The Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward. It is a big, chunky fantasy. It is a new fantasy. It came out recently, and I am very excited about this because I have the arc for this on NetGalley, which I didn't end up reading through NetGalley or on my Kindle because I find it really difficult to read huge fantasy books on a screen rather than physically like this. I talked about it in one of my previous vlogs that um, because my job is staring at a screen all day and like 
my elective job is that as well with writing and YouTube with editing videos that staring at a screen to then read afterwards gives me a terrible headache so I prefer to read them physically and I wanted to pick up this book anyways because I am genuinely very interested in it so I can't wait to read this. It is pitched as Game of Thrones meets The Last Kingdom um, which is an incredible pitch. <laughs> I am always here for books that are compared to Game of Thrones because I am always looking for those big, expansive, sweeping fantasies, and this one sounds like it too, so I'm just gonna read you a bit of the back. Fate turns, legacies burn, a phoenix shall blaze from the darkness. A shadow has fallen over the Tressian Republic. Ruling families, once protectors of justice and democracy, now plot against one another with sharp words and sharper knives. Blinded by ambition, they remain heedless of the threat posed by the invading armies of the Hadari Empire. The Republic faces its darkest hour, yet as Tressia falls, heroes rise. So, very excited about this. And it is big and chunky, and I just want June to be a big chunky fantasy month. So, excited about this. It, I don't know if it's actually that big. Oh no, it's big. It's over 700 pages, but like, it's beautiful too. Look at this. Look how gorgeous this is. Anyways, so that'll be one. And I am also going to be, hopefully, reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I got requested by somebody to do a reading vlog for this, so I will be doing that sometime this month, which is very exciting because I am intrigued to read about this morally gray character. We have, not even a morally gray character, he's straight up evil. I'm ready to read about this straight up evil guy, President Snow, when he was younger. I'm intrigued by this. I'm very intrigued. I'm hoping I like it and I'm hoping I find merits in it. But also if I hate it, I that's gonna make a good discussion, so amazing. And I am also planning on reading The Mark of Athena because I am currently reading it. <laughs> uh, it is the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan and I am enjoying it so far. This month I also plan on reading Beach Read uh, because I believe that is going to be our lovely ladies book club pick for the month of June. So definitely pick that up and read it with us. I have no idea when the live stream is going to be, uh, but it'll be probably end of June, early July. So definitely pick that up and read with us because it is the perfect month to read a beach read. I'm going to end my video here. I really hope you guys liked watching. Let me know down below what your favorite book of May was and what you were going to be reading in June as well. And I hope to catch you in another video soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.